हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑन माय चैनल इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स डीजे गणित इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम मोर एग्जांपल्स ऑन चारपिट्स मेथड इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड व्हाट इज द आइडिया ऑफ चारपिट्स मेथड एंड हाउ इट कैन बी यूज्ड टू सॉल्व गिवन नॉन लीनियर पार्शियल डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन ऑफ फर्स्ट ऑर्डर सो टुडे आल्सो वी आर गोइंग टू डू टू मोर एग्जांपल्स ऑन चारपिट्स मेथड so let us start with example number 1 find complete and singular integrals of this equation so as we have discussed in the last lecture the first step is to transfer all the non zero terms on one side so here all the non zero terms are already on one side so we consider that non zero part as function of x y z pq so here we define small f equal to 2xz minus px square minus 2qxy plus p into q so first we require partial derivatives of small f so partial derivative with respect to x is there is a x in this first three terms there is no x in this term so derivative of this term with respect to x is zero in first term 2z is constant derivative of x is 1 in second term minus p is constant derivative of x square is 2x so it is minus 2px in third term 2qy is constant and derivative of x is 1 so again i repeat del f by del x is 2z constant derivative of x is 1 p constant derivative of x square is minus 2x and uh, minus 2qy constant derivative of x is 1 similarly partial derivative with respect to y so there is no y in first and second term in third term we consider minus 2qx as constant derivative of y is 1 and there is no y in this term so derivative with respect to y is 0 then partial derivative with respect to z so in first term 2x is constant derivative of z is 1 and there is no z in remaining terms partial derivative with respect to p so in first term there is no p in second term we have minus x square constant derivative of p is 1 there is no p in this term here in the last term q is constant derivative of p is 1 and the last one is partial derivative with respect to q so there is no q in first and second term in third term minus 2xy is constant derivative of q is 1 and in last term p is constant derivative of q is 1 now next step is to write down charpitt's auxiliary equations so charpitt's auxiliary equations are we have to remember charpitt's auxiliary equations so as we have discussed in the last lecture dx upon del f by del p equal to dy divided by del f by del q dz divided by p into fp and fq is multiplied with q dp upon minus del f by del x minus p into fz equal to differential of q divided by minus del f by del y minus q times fz so now we substitute all these partial derivatives in this auxiliary equations so therefore dx what is partial derivative with respect to p it is minus x square q so that we can write as q minus x square dy divided by del f by del q which is uh, p minus 2xy 
equal to dz divided by p into del f by del q that is q minus x square plus q into del f by del q that is p minus 2xy. which is equal to differential of p minus del f by del x del f by del x is 2z minus 2px minus 2qy 2z minus 2qx minus 2py let me check again del f by del x is 2z minus 2px minus 2qy. So here we have 2px. This is del f by del x and negative of del f by del x. Minus p into fz. So del f by del z is 2x. So here we have p into 2x. Similarly, we can write uh, partial derivative differential of q divided by negative of partial derivative with respect to y. So, partial derivative with respect to y is minus 2qx. So, here we put minus 2qx minus q into del f by del z which is 2x. Okay, so we denote this auxiliary equations by number 1. Now we can simplify these equations so that we can combine appropriate fractions to solve for p and q. So recently we are not giving this number 1. First we simplify and uh, try to see which fractions we are able to compare. So therefore dx divided by q minus x square equal to dy upon p minus 2xy dz here we multiply with uh, p, so we have pq minus px square. p into q minus p into x square. And uh, p into q minus 2px, p into q minus 2qxy. p into q minus 2q xy let me check again pq minus px square plus pq minus 2qxy and uh, this is equal to dp divided by here we take negative sign inside the bracket so minus 2z plus 2px plus 2py minus 2px minus 2z plus 2px plus 2py minus 2px this is equal to dq divided by 2qx minus 2qx So we can see denominator of uh, dq becomes 0, 2qx minus 2qx. So here I can write dq divided by 0. And we give this number 1. Now as we have discussed in Lagrange method, all these quantities are equal, all these fractions are equal. So suppose all fractions are equal to some number or function. Suppose all the functions are equal to say alpha. 
then we will have first fraction equal to alpha second fraction equal to alpha similarly dq upon 0 that is last fraction is also equal to alpha so if we consider dq then we will have alpha into 0 that is 0 so as we have discussed if we obtained 0 in the denominator we can directly write numerator equal to 0 so from last fraction I can directly put dq equal to 0 and that will give me the value of small q. So we can write uh, from last fraction of 1 we can put dq equal to 0. So therefore integrating we obtain q equal to say small a where a is arbitrary constant now to find out uh, value of p we put q equal to small a in given equation suppose given equation is equation number star so in equation star we put small q equal to a sorry we put ok q is a so to obtain value of small p we put q equal to a in given equation which is equation number star uh, we get so we have to put q equal to a remaining things as it is so there is no q here so 2xz minus px square 2xz minus px square we have to put q equal to a so it is minus 2axy plus pa minus 2axy plus p into a equal to 0 so by simplifying this expression we have to obtain value of small p so we can combine these two terms so we have p into a minus x square and uh, these two terms we take on right hand side so it is 2axy minus 2xz again we can take uh, 2x common so it is uh, 2 times x here we have a into y minus z this is 2 so we require value of small p so we take a minus x square on the right hand side so finally our small p is 2x into a y minus z divided by a minus x square So now once we obtain value of small p and small q, uh, we can put them in that uh, expression. We know that z is a function of x and y. So we can have dz equal to del z by del x dx plus del z by del y dy. So therefore dz is p dx plus q dy. So we substitute values of small p and small q in this uh, equation. So small p is 2x into ay minus z and in the denominator we have a minus x square and q is a. Now in this uh, expression uh, we can take this uh, term dz uh, this term we consider on left hand side and uh, we will obtain dz minus a dy equal to 2x times a y minus z divided by 
a minus x square i forget to write dx here okay, p into dx into dx now uh, if you observe this i can rewrite as negative of a dy minus dz and I take this term ay minus z on left hand side and uh, this I denote by this I write as dx 2x into 2x divided by a minus x square okay, I keep a minus x square as it is 2x divided by a minus x square dx and this negative sign also we consider on right hand side okay, so here we take minus 2x divided by a minus x square and uh, we remove this uh, bracket so now here you can see if we take differential of ay minus z, it is nothing but a dy minus dz. So, numerator I can write as differential of ay minus z. d of ay minus z is a dy minus dz. And uh, this is ay minus z. And here uh, we can have a minus x square and uh, this is minus 2x is nothing but derivative of a minus x square so derivative of a minus x square divided by a minus x square so now this is separable so if we integrate on both sides integrating we obtain log of ay minus z equal to here i have to divide by coefficient of y sorry it is not uh, division by y it is simply log of ay minus z if we have this type of integral 1 upon ay minus z dz then we have to divide by y so here the case is different here it is like this if we assume that uh, ay minus z equal to say alpha then it is d alpha upon alpha so the integral is log alpha so it is like that case so this is equal to log of a minus x square plus constant of integration okay, here you, we are using this formula derivative of fx divided by fx integral is log of fx so this uh, we have used in second part and uh, in first part of course it is same okay, a y minus z differential of a y minus z so therefore this i can rewrite as ln a y minus z equal to ln b times a minus x square using property of logarithm and because logarithmic function is one one function this is equal to b times a minus x square so this is complete integral of given equation I have to rewrite this again a y minus z equal to b times a minus x square so we give this uh, number 2 so 2 is nothing but complete integral of given equation which is complete integral 
of given equation star where this a and b are arbitrary constants now we are asked to find out singular integral also so as we know singular integral can be obtained from complete integral by eliminating arbitrary constants so here we have to eliminate arbitrary constants from complete integral too so to eliminate arbitrary constants so we have to differentiate complete integral with respect to a and b so we now find out singular integral so for that uh, we differentiate to partially with respect to a and b we get so partial derivative of 2 with respect to a so here y is constant derivative of a is 1 z is considered as constant so derivative is zero similarly b is constant and derivative of a is 1 and this is zero so we obtain y equal to b if we differentiate with respect to a and derivative with respect to b so there is no b in left hand side so we put uh, zero derivative of a by minus z with respect to b is 0 and derivative of this term with respect to b is a minus x square so from this so we obtain a equal to x square and b is y so we put a equal to x square and b equal to y in equation number 2 to eliminate arbitrary constants So putting a equal to x square and b equal to y into uh, we have a equal to x square and b equal to y. So a equal to x square. So left hand side is x square y minus z. and right hand side is b equal to y and a equal to x square so if i put a equal to x square i will obtain 0 into y which is 0 so we obtain x square minus y equal to 0 so therefore z equal to x square into y so this is nothing but singular integral So which is singular integral of given equation star so in this way you can have different types of examples of non linear first order partial differential equations so all you have to remember is you first uh, find out partial derivatives of uh, function f and then use charpitz equations to find out values of small p and small q along with the given equation and then remember this uh, equation dz equal to p dx plus q dy and then integrate to obtain the complete integral so we consider one more example find a complete integral of uh, this equation so we start by denoting left hand side by small f so let small f is 16 p square z square plus 9 q square z square plus 4 z square minus 4 so first we find out partial derivatives there is no x here and there is no x in each term so del f by del x is 
partial derivative with respect to y is also zero there is no y in this all the four terms uh, we have z in first term so 16 p square as it is derivative of z square with respect to z is 2 z same thing here 9 q square as it is derivative of z square is 2 z plus 4 as it is derivative of z square is 2 z again i repeat 16 p square as it is derivative of z square is 2 z 9 q square as it is derivative of z square is 2 z 4 as it is derivative of z square is 2 z so we rewrite this again this is going to be 32 32 times p square z plus 18 times q square z plus 8z 16 into 2 32 times p square z plus 9 into 2 18 times q square z plus 8z then we find out partial derivative of small f with respect to small p so here 16z square constant and derivative of p square is 2p so it is 32pz square and there is no p in any term and uh, del f by del q is there is a q square in second term only so it is going to be 9z square into 2q so that is 18q z square now next step is write down Charpitz equations or Charpitz auxiliary equations so we shortly write Charpitz equations are dx divided by del f by del p equal to dy divided by del f by del q dz divided by p into del f by del p plus q into del f by del q dp divided by minus fx minus pfz equal to dq divided by minus fy minus qfz now del f by del x and del f by del y are zero and del f by del p is 32 pz square so we require here 32 pz square so therefore dx upon 32 pz square equal to dy del f by del q is 18 q z square so 18 times q z square equal to dz divided by p into del f by del p which is 32 p z square plus q into del f by del q which is 18 q z square and uh, this is not positive sign here we require negative sign this is equal to dp upon del f by del x is 0 del f by del y is 0 and uh, minus p into fz so we write uh, minus p into del f by del z is 32 p square z plus 18 q square z it is 32 p square z plus 18 q square z plus 8 z this is equal to dq is minus f y minus q into f z so f z is 30 this one 32 p square z plus 18 q square z plus 8 z so we give this number 1 so it is obvious from the last two fractions
that this bracket will cancel out and we can solve the resulting two fractions so taking last two fractions of 1 we get so you can see this bracket will cancel out along with negative sign so we will have dp upon p equal to dq upon q and uh, therefore integrating we obtain log p equal to log q plus log a so this we can rewrite as log of q into a using property of logarithm and because log is 1 1 function we obtain small p equal to q into a and now we put small p equal to q into a in given equation so put p equal to q into a in given equation uh, we obtain so p equal to q into a is to be put in given equation given equation is this one so in this uh, equation we have to put p equal to q a so first uh, term is going to be 16 a square q square z square sixteen a square q square z square first term if you put p equal to q a similarly nine q square a square z square so is as it is okay, so there is there is a p in first term only so we have to put p equal to q a and remaining terms as it is so 9 q square z square plus 4 z square minus 4 9 q square z square plus 4 z square minus 4 equal to 0 okay, so we have written 9 q square z square plus 4 z square minus 4 9 q square z square plus 4 z square minus 4 and we have put p equal to q a in first term so it is 16 a square q square z square so first term is 16 a square q square z square now from this i have to decide the value of small q so here we can take uh, z square common or if we take uh, 16 a square q square z square and here 9 a square z square so this we can rewrite as so this we can write as q square can be taken common from these two terms first two terms we take q square common and uh, we have 16 a square z square plus 9 z square and uh, this we consider on right hand side so it is 4 minus 4 z square so this is equal to 4 times 1 minus z square and uh, from this uh, bracket we can take z square common so we will have 16 a square plus 9 times z square now if we take square root on both sides uh, we have 2 times under root 1 minus z square divided by z into 
16 a square plus 9 here you in square root of z square is z here square root of 4 is 2 square root of 1 minus z square and uh, here we have to write square root of under root 16 a square plus 9 16 a square plus 9 so this is value of small q and uh, p equal to q into a so that we will put directly in that expression so next step is put values of small p and uh, small q in dz equal to p dx plus q dy uh, we have dz equal to p is q into a into dx p dx p is q a plus q dy okay, because small p is nothing but q into a as we have obtained p equal to q into a so from this uh, also we can put uh, this q outside and uh, we have a dx plus dy and we substitute value of small q here So therefore dz is now 2 times square root of 1 minus z square divided by z into square root of 16 a square plus 9. This is value of q into a dx plus dy now we we transfer all this okay, if we transfer this with uh, this one we have z is multiplied here and uh, we have under root of 1 minus z square dz equal to we keep constants as it is that is our choice we can transfer on left hand side also 16 a square plus 9 and a dx plus dy now this is separable therefore integral of this we can rewrite as 1 minus z square raised to minus 1 half here we write minus 2z so we have to multiply with minus 1 by 2 okay, because we have z here and we know that derivative of 1 minus z square is minus 2z with respect to z so therefore we multiply and divide by 2 and uh, this is going to be square root of 16 a square plus 9 and integral is a into x plus y plus arbitrary constant so therefore this is minus 1 by 2 1 minus z square is raised to minus 1 by 2 plus 1 which is 1 by 2 divided by 1 by 2 equal to 2 times ax plus y divided by square root of 16 a square plus 9 plus b and uh, therefore this uh, one half will cancel out and we will have negative of 1 minus z square equal to 2 times ax plus y divided by under root of 16 a square plus 9 
plus b so this is about uh, complete integral of given equation where a and b are arbitrary constants okay, so if you wish you can further simplify so that it will look nice otherwise this is also correct so this is about charpitz method uh, in next lecture also we will do some more problems on charpitz method so i hope you like this lecture thank you very much